to drizzle or not to drizzle? That is the question. And if you read around on the various forums, there are varying opinions, as with so many things in astrophotography. Some persons say they only drizzle if their images are undersampled, and often they insist it's pointless to drizzle otherwise. Other persons insist that drizzling is always a good idea. And I fall into the latter camp. I drizzle every image I create. It takes more time, it uses more memory, but I consistently get better results. Now before going any further, I should add, for those who may be new to the channel and don't know, I live in the Canadian backwoods in a border 1 to 2 area. So when I shoot astrophotography, I'm typically either imaging with a mono camera using LRGB filters, or I'm shooting with an OSC using only a UV IR cut filter. About the only time I'm ever shooting narrowband is if I am trying to shoot during a nearly full moon. I'm just adding that because if you are shooting from an area with light pollution, then your mileage may vary in terms of what you'll get out of this video. But for me, it's always worth drizzling. For the last couple years, when I shoot astrophotography, I typically use a Williams Optics 81mm Xenostar Apo Refractor, along with a Player One Uranus C camera, and more recently a Celestron C8 with a Player One Ares M monochrome camera. I get very good results from both cameras and only differ slightly in how I process the images, only in the initial developing in PixInsight. Both these setups were chosen because the pixel size of the cameras matches well with the focal length and aperture of the telescopes. As you can see here, with these images taken from the CCD suitability calculator found at astronomy.tools, these two cameras, paired with each telescope they are mounted on, are about perfect matches for the seeing conditions around here. So it is safe to say that when I shoot astrophotography, my images are appropriately sampled. So I thought I'd explore this issue of drizzling, whether or not to drizzle, and why I always drizzle, by, rather than going into endless calculations and discussions of posts on forums, I would just show you the results of why I choose to drizzle. In fact, any and every image you've ever seen on my channel is the result of drizzling. But here and now, I'm going to compare and contrast a drizzled versus non-drizzled image from my camera. We'll be using an image I recently took with the Celestron C8, which is a 203mm or 8-inch aperture telescope with a 1280mm focal length with its reducer corrector. And paired with the Player One Ares M camera, the telescope sensor combination is perfectly sampled. And so, if we follow conventional logic, I should have absolutely no reason to drizzle this image. But I'm going to posit that conventional logic is wrong. Now I've opened PixInsight, and here you see NGC 3628, otherwise known as the Hamburger Galaxy, or Ceres Galaxy. This data is taken only from the Luminance channel. Both these images have been processed in the exact same way, right down to applying the very same technique to stretch the histogram. But the image on the left has not been drizzled, and the image on the right has been drizzled. Right away, the drizzled image shows up as more contrasty. The space is darker, the stars are smaller, and the Stardust Belt, right down the middle of the galaxy, is darker in the drizzled image. Now one of the arguments against drizzling, if you can avoid it, is that drizzling ostensibly lowers the SNR, the signal-to-noise ratio. Let's take a look and see what's going on up close. Up close, a visual inspection doesn't really show that there is more noise in the drizzled image. Rather, in the drizzled side, we seem to see a bit more contrast. The space is darker, and anything that emits light shows up more. Overall, at this stage of the game though, we don't see much difference between the non-drizzled and drizzled side of the image. I suppose we could run a noise analysis tool, but we can get so lost up in calculations and numbers that sometimes we miss what's in front of our eyes. And what my eyes are showing me right now is that there is no problem with the drizzled side of the image. There's not much advantage in it either. At this point, one might think, well, what's the point of drizzling? Especially if the outcome is just a more contrasty image. We can always add contrast. Well, as you'll see, there is an advantage, and with modern software, it shows up as processing moves along. Let's zoom in a little bit and see what the image looks like up close. Having zoomed in a lot and taking a very close look, once again, we can see almost no difference between the drizzled and non-drizzled side of the image. Not at this time. Now, it's often said that drizzling is only useful if your image is undersampled. If your image is adequately sampled, as is the case here, at this point in the developing process, drizzling would appear to be quite frankly pointless, a process that takes up more time and eats up more memory. But as you're going to see, the further along we get in the developing process, the more advantage you're going to see in drizzling. And by the time we are done with developing, the advantages of drizzling are going to stand out by far. 
However, the drizzle damage is going to get worse before it gets better. That'll happen in the next step with initial deconvolution and sharpening, here with the Blur Exterminator. The Blur Exterminator has finished running on both images. Let's see what it's done for us. We'll zoom in and take a look at that group of galaxies beneath the Hamburger Galaxy first. Now if we were to stop here, we would say that the non-drizzled image had an advantage. Because having run the Blur Exterminator, it looks like the undrizzled image on the left is a little cleaner. There's plenty of noise in it, but it doesn't show up as much. Whereas the Blur Exterminator on the right appears to have sharpened the noise just as much as it has every star and object in the image. It gives the illusion that the drizzled image is noisier. It's not noisier, it's just the sharpening process. You might say it has sharpened up the noise as well, so it shows up a little more. Though if we move up to, say, the left side of the galaxy and take a look at the galactic structure, we see that the drizzled side has developed a slight advantage. It's a little sharper, just a bit. But bear in mind, we're not yet finished processing this image. I'm going to go ahead and run a histogram stretch on both images so that we can then run the noise exterminator. Having taken development further by stretching the histogram and running the noise exterminator on both images, we can see the gap widening between the advantage of the drizzled image and the non-drizzled image. When the noise is effectively removed from the picture, the space in the drizzled image is darker, the stars are tighter, and the brightness of all the objects, from the stardust belt in the galaxy to the tiny distant galaxies in the cluster below the Hamburger Galaxy, it's all sharper, crisper, and cleaner. The advantage of the drizzled side has gone from slight to slight but substantial. So far we've just been looking at the luminance channel. Let's go ahead and add the rest of the RGB information to both the images and see what happens. So we've added about another 180 subs between the RGB information. That, in addition to the 240 luminance subs, comes up to a total of uh, 7 hours of integration. Once again, the drizzled image is on the right. And again, as before, you can see that the drizzled image is moving further and further ahead in terms of quality from the non-drizzled image as we continue development. Every aspect of the galaxy in the drizzled image is better. The color is more intense, it's better balanced, Space is darker. All the objects from stars to miniature galaxies within the drizzled image show up cleaner and crisper. And the wisp of gas to the left of the galaxy shows up sharper in the drizzled image as well. Now I'm going to perform a quickie little sharpening trick on both the images here. I'm going to run Blur Exterminator again on both images. Though this time I'm going to have sharpened stars turned all the way down to zero and the luminance only option box selected. That way the Blur Exterminator will apply a little extra sharpening to both images equally. Now normally I would never approach sharpening any image this way, but I wanted to give each image a little extra sharpening and be sure that you could see that it was done equally. So the same Blur Exterminator settings were used on the drizzled and non-drizzled version. The drizzled is to the right and the non-drizzled to the left. And you can clearly see that the drizzled image has done more with that additional sharpening. Blur Exterminator was able to create finer detail on the right image, the drizzled image. Lastly, I'm going to sharpen up both images properly. I'm going to open them up in Affinity Photo and use the technique in which I make the unsharp mass, the clarity tool, and the high pass filter all work together and mutually supportively to maximize the sharpening of the image. If you're curious about that technique, look up my video, Sharpening Synergy. A link is available at the top right. All right, once again, the non-drizzled image is on the left and the drizzled image on the right, and I've run them both through Affinity Photo, where I have applied the Unsharp Mask Clarity Tool and High Pass Filter synergistically to maximize the sharpness on each image. In addition, I ran the Curves Tool similarly on both images to try to maximize their color and appearance. In particular, using the Curves Tool, I drew a little green out of the space on the non-drizzled image because that green was stuck in there, and on the red RGB channel, I ran the red up just around the middle point to try to bring up some of the reds around the Stardust Belt. But I wasn't able to draw out much red color in the non-drizzled image because, frankly, that information is barely there. At least not to the same degree that it's available in the drizzled image. The end result is that the non-drizzled image, as compared to the drizzled image, has listless color, the contrast is not as crisp, and once again, as you can see, the Stardust Lane down the middle of the Hamburger Galaxy in the non-drizzled image is, frankly, just considerably softer than it is in the drizzled image on the right. And bear in mind, both these images were shot with the same camera and the same telescope, the Celestron C8 and the Player One Ares-M. 
a monochrome camera using ZWO LRGB filters. And if you look at the spectral bar at the bottom of the suitability calculator, the black bar right in the middle of the green zone tells us this telescope is perfectly sampled by this camera in these seeing conditions. And with that being the case, not only did drizzling not hurt the final image, but in every way that I can think of, the drizzled image is better. Now recall how this started. At the very beginning of this comparison, there was no real difference between the undrizzled image and the drizzled image. And when we first ran Blur Exterminator to do an initial deconvolution and sharpening of the two images, the undrizzled image looked cleaner because in the drizzled image, the Blur Exterminator had also sharpened up noise. Though to be fair, the drizzled image developed a very slight advantage at that time in sharpness. But as we moved forward with the development process, stretched the histogram and ran the noise exterminator, then we saw that the drizzled image became just as clean, while its stars and structures became sharper and crisper. And the appearance of the advantage did not stop there. As developing continued, the advantages of the drizzled image became more and more evident. So that, when we added the RGB information to the image, and then ran the image through Affinity Photo to apply some sharpening tools and refine the curves on each image, the gap between the drizzled and the non-drizzled image became substantial. And you can see it in the two images above, where the drizzled image on the right is clearly superior. The conclusion that I've come to draw is that the idea that drizzling is only beneficial if your image is undersampled, and the parallel conclusion that drizzling can be harmful to an adequately sampled image, that they're both myths and nothing more. And I think these myths evolved in a couple of ways. One way regards the way that drizzling at first lowers the signal-to-noise ratio, making the noise in the image more apparent. I think years ago when drizzling was first developed, that noise was probably more of an issue, but these days we have such powerful tools to address noise that it's, it's a minor nuisance now. And the second myth, that drizzling does nothing for an adequately sampled image and possibly even degrades it a little, well, I think it's pretty clear from what we've gone over in this video how that evolved. When an adequately sampled image is first drizzled, we don't see any real advantage to it. It's perhaps a little more contrasty, but that's it. And when that image is first deconvolved and sharpened, these days probably done with an exceedingly powerful tool like the Blur Exterminator, then a drizzled image can actually seem at a disadvantage to a non-drizzled image. And it is only when we push past that stage of developing that the true potential for drizzled images becomes evident. Because from that point on, as we push forward, the quality of a drizzled image pulls ahead on a non-drizzled image in every single step of development. And by the time development is completed, a drizzled image is considerably superior to a non-drizzled image. And in all the images that I have ever developed, I have seen no exceptions. So there you have it, my thoughts on this. I drizzle everything, and I recommend that you do as well. As far as how I go about drizzling, if you are a PixInsight user, and do your image integration in the weighted batch processing script. If you go to the post calibration tab and look on the right, at about the middle of the second column from the right, you'll see the drizzle configuration box. That's where you set up your subs for drizzling during integration. To execute the drizzle process, check enable. For scale, two is plenty. Two is a lot of drizzling I find, so that I always just go with two. And typically the default for the drop shrink function is fine, 0 0.90. Leave everything else as is. If you're running more than one group of images, click Apply to all groups so that drizzle is applied evenly. It's as simple as that. The only disadvantage that I can see to drizzling ever is that the files are much larger. So you'll need a little bit more memory for them, but that's only the finished file. It doesn't change the size of your subs or anything. And in today's world, where we measure the size of hard drives by multiple terabytes, what's a few hundred more megs in the size of a drizzled file? And it'll take you a little bit longer to run the exterminators on a drizzled file, but to me, if we're going to spend all night or multiple nights capturing the light for an image, it's worth spending some extra time to develop it to get the very best out of it. Now, I know that some persons on the forums and on YouTube channels talk about downsampling images after you drizzle them to reduce the size of the final images and as a way to mitigate some of the noise that might be sharpened up in the drizzling process. For myself, though, honestly, I never, ever find that necessary. After the images are drizzled, I just run a noise removal tool to get rid of it. These days, RC Astro's Noise Exterminator, but before that tool, I just got rid of the noise with other noise removal tools, and that was it. That's all it took. So, when considering whether to drizzle or not to drizzle, my advice honestly is, always drizzle. You have so little to lose, 
and so much to gain. And while you might get an initial appearance of noise, especially after you deconvolve or deblur an image, as your processing moves further along, any appearance of noise in the image is going to quickly vanish. After all, by and large, these days, it's so easy to handle most kinds of noise. There's always a tool or a technique to deal with that. Though frankly, I've never come across any noise that might turn up in the drizzling process that wasn't very easily removed with any noise removal tool, and in particular, with exceedingly powerful modern tools like the Noise Exterminator. It's a snap. It's just not even on my list of things to be worried about when developing an image. So, always drizzle. That's my advice. I hope you found that helpful, and as always, thanks for watching. If you decide to run some experiments for yourself, I'd love to hear the outcomes. And please take a moment to hit those like and subscribe buttons. So, go grab your equipment and get out there and shoot the sky.